So last night I decided to cancel the tickets I had for The Lion King and uh, stop working on Captain America from Endgame for a little bit for the big Marvel Studios Hall H panel and uh, yeah. Oh my god, after all these years we finally have a good idea as to what Phase 4 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going to look like post-Avengers Endgame. And to just go in chronological order, they announced so much. Uh, half of it is the pretty much like all the Disney Plus shows, and then the other half are movies that are coming out within the next two years, and they didn't even get to a lot of other projects like Black Panther 2, Captain Marvel 2, or uh, even Spider-Man 3, and Guardians 3, and so on, and so... What they did announce though, again going in chronological order, Black Widow, which we already know they've been filming and certainly looked like a prequel uh, to Avengers Endgame for obvious reasons, is officially coming out May 1st of 2020 and they confirmed that it does take place after Civil War and before Infinity War. Natasha goes back to Budapest and she encounters Taskmaster. So that's, uh, yeah, ta ta Taskmaster has been existing in the MCU since uh, before Infinity War, actively at least. And so that's uh, quite the reveal, but I'm so excited for that because to me, Natasha has always been hands down the most underdeveloped Avenger out of the original six and the mentions to her past have always been great and nice, but getting the chance to actually do this solo movie and have really solid flashbacks to really delve into her backstory um, I'm looking forward to it, man. I can't wait. And of course, they did announce a couple of the other cast members, uh, including like the likes of uh, David Harbour from Stranger Things, which is pretty exciting. I thought he was going to be playing Taskmaster, honestly, but uh, maybe not. Coming up after that, of course, will be our first Disney Plus show, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. This is honestly the series that I am looking forward to the most. By far, I mean, I am so excited for Sam Wilson Cap, and it sounds like Anthony Mackie has already put on this suit. They've already started doing costume tests. They're getting the ball rolling. Uh, this thing is coming out in just over a year, and so that is super, super exciting. But of course, they did uh, mention once again that Daniel Brühl will be joining them as the main antagonist. Zemo returning yet again, this time finally donning the iconic mask, apparently from the comics with a hood. I don't know. I haven't actually seen it yet, but that is awesome because I really would have loved to have seen that in Civil War. I kind of wonder if they'll address what happened to Steve after he came back following his entire lifetime with Peggy to hand the shield off. Did he just like hang out at Avengers HQ until he died. Of course though, after that, we've got the Eternals and they came out with the whole cast. I don't remember any of them, but of course the standout is Angelina Jolie who will be leading up the cast, uh, which is pretty great. And uh, I also don't know anything about the Eternals other than they're like an offshoot of humanity uh, somehow, uh, somewhere on the evolutionary time. I have no idea. Uh, I still have yet to do any research on them, but it sounds cool. We had no idea who the Guardians of the Galaxy were back in 2012 when that movie was announced, so I am definitely on board for whoever the hell the Eternals are. After that, though, in 2021, they're doing... I honestly thought that this movie was just going to be a rumor for a really long time. I didn't expect this movie to be happening so soon, but Shang-Chi and the Ten... <clears throat> Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Um, yeah, man, I am looking forward to it. I They, they already cast Shang-Chi. Uh, his name escapes me. I literally just like passed out after the panel and woke up to record this video and I still haven't checked. Uh, but uh, the guy apparently was really going for the role and said as much on Twitter and then had a really great tweet back to Marvel after the panel. Thanks for getting back to me. And so that's really cool. But really what's exciting to me is they also cast the real Mandarin and oh man I uh, listen man I am of the unpopular opinion I still to this day do not like the Mandarin twist from Iron Man 3 I thought that was a really bad waste of Ben Kingsley and I really didn't appreciate it considering how close Tony's ties were with the Ten Rings I think it would have been really like the culmination of his trilogy to encounter the leader of that organization and instead he's showing up here in uh, The Legend of the Ten Rings with Shang-Chi, which is 
Fine too, I guess. I mean, can't have everything, and I'm looking forward to this movie. I really, again, like the Eternals, I need to brush up on whoever the hell Shang-Chi is. I am not informed. Marvel's really going headfirst now into their more obscure characters. So yeah, that's coming out February of 2021, but then in spring of 2021, we've got WandaVision, which I am also very excited for because not only am I excited to just finally have a lot of screen time with Wanda. I mean, we've had a good amount in her appearances thus far in the MCU. She's been great, but having her own dedicated series is just so exciting, of course, with Paul Bettany returning as Vision. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to get to the answer to this question. How is Vision alive? How is he even in this series? It is taking place uh, after Endgame, the little girl from Captain Marvel, they already cast like an adult version and uh, so that actress, uh, I forget her name, uh, she was brought out on stage last night and that's pretty cool. I mean, that's quite a coincidence that a character from Captain Marvel is going to link up with Wanda and Vision somehow. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how all those story developments come into play. I mean, some have speculated that maybe uh, there was a copy, a, a backup of Vision successfully created through, you know, during the process that Shuri had to rush uh, during Infinity War or or maybe Wanda brings him back somehow with her own abilities, or maybe works with Doctor Strange. Uh, we will see, but I mean, WandaVision sounds great, and I'm very much looking forward to it, but after that, of course, will come uh, Loki, and man, it must have been so great being in Hall 8 for all of this, because they brought out the, the respective actors and cast for every single one of these projects, which is just... That must have been great. I mean, Hall H is just got to be a dream experience. And um, <laughs> so, of course, Tom Middleton comes out to uh, talk about the series a little bit. And we already know uh, a lot about the series um, already because this, of course, is going to be an alternate reality series that follows 2012 Loki in that alternate reality created by our main Avengers when they went back to 2012 and accidentally displaced the Tesseract by allowing Loki to escape by accident. So I'm very much looking forward to it. The logo kind of sucks, but apparently it's supposed to emulate kind of how Loki's going to be bouncing all over time with it, which is kind of surprising. I didn't know you could time travel with the Tesseract, but I guess maybe he figures out a way to do it or some other way. I don't know what the rumor is. He's going around uh, human history to just, I guess, sort of make himself a godlike figure to humanity so he can uh, take over the Earth that way. And that's um, if that's true, that's really awesome. And I absolutely love that idea, Loki inserting himself all throughout history. <laughs> Following that though, of course, we will have Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. And I don't know about you guys, but as far as the new Avengers movies are concerned, a, a sequel to Doctor Strange is by far one of the, like, I, I am more excited for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness than Black Panther 2 or Captain Marvel 2 or maybe even Guardians 3, if I'm being honest. I'm just really excited for Doctor Strange 2, especially now that they brought Elizabeth Olsen back out to confirm that Scarlet Witch will be joining the Master of the Mystic Arts for his second movie after her series, WandaVision, which links up directly with it, and that is so exciting. Apparently, it's going to be the Marvel Cinematic Universe's first horror movie. Like, essentially, it's PG-13 still, apparently, Kevin Feige said, I think, on stage, but um, it's gonna be, like, the first ever, like, suspense thriller. There are gonna be jump scares. There are going to be things that kind of uh, startle you, I guess. We'll see, man. It's, it's That's awesome, though. I'm really looking forward to it. It just, and, and Nightmare being the villain, I, I it just, this the scale of it just sounds so amazing. And to me, it would have been so great if we had a movie like this come out right after Endgame, if that would have been at all possible. Obviously not, Ben and Cumberbatch can't shoot three Marvel movies like that. Um, but if we had something something on a, on a scale like this to come out right after Endgame to appropriately deal with the consequences of Endgame, I think would have been really great, which was obviously no fault of Spider-Man Far From Home having to shoulder that great of a burden. But anyway, after that, we're having uh, the day debut of the uh, What If shows, and um, I was under the impression that the Peggy Becomes Captain America What If show was actually going to be live action, and I was really excited for that, but apparently not that, and uh, all the other, uh, I, I guess it's all fun, it falls under one roof as one series. Um, the Marvel What If show is going to cover a lot of ground, of alternate ideas of what else could have happened throughout the MCU. And besides Robert Downey Jr. and say Chris Evans or Scarlett Johansson and some of the other uh, main actors, they've got 
one hell of a cast and the whole thing is being headed up by Jeffrey Wright who's playing the Watcher which is uh or a watcher, and there are multiple watchers. The watcher is, uh, that's awesome. I'm not exactly jumping up and down over this yet, but I mean, the cast is amazing. They have so many uh, MCU actors, so that's gonna be really great. Um, I mean, they've got the likes of even Michael B. Jordan in there with Chadwick Boseman and Mark Ruffalo, and I mean, they've got, of course, Haley Atwell in there. I saw Michael Douglas and Paul Rudd, and oh my God. Even the guy uh, who played Dr. Erskine, which is so great, I, I, I mean, oh man, I, it's gonna be awesome. Then in fall of 2021, we'll be getting the Hawkeye series on Disney Plus also, and uh, yo, Kate Bishop confirmed to debut in it, which is very exciting. I really thought Jeremy Renner was gonna be just out, done after Endgame. I mean, he had his best appearance in Endgame. That was by far his best work in the MCU. And uh, I thought he was gonna be done after that point. But of course, so many of the Avengers survived who I did not expect to. And um, Jeremy Renner, is, he's gonna keep going, man. Who knows for how long? Maybe he'll just stick around for one season of this. I mean, who knows? Because they're all, a lot of them are sticking around and that's awesome. And I cannot wait to see him uh, train Kate Bishop to, I guess, take on the mantle of Hawkeye down the road. But finally, the last movie they announced, only going up until November 2021. Back in October 2014 for the Phase 3 announcement, they gave us like three to four years worth of MCU movies. And that, uh, not all of them happened, of course. Uh, Inhumans, we'll try to forget about that. But the last movie that was announced for Phase 4 as of right now, Thor, Love, and Thunder coming November 2021. Only taking us up until 2021 for right now because of course, uh, the Phase 3 announcement back in October 2014 took us all the way up until Avengers Endgame and even a little past that when Inhumans was supposed to debut last month. But we won't talk about that. But we know there's so much more coming, so this is totally fine. And of course, Taika Waititi is returning to direct, and uh, that's exciting, man. It's exciting. I happen to have the unpopular opinion of not actually really liking Thor Ragnarok all that much. I get it that that is the most unpopular opinion that one could probably have. Um, but I just felt like Thor Ragnarok left a lot on the table as far as where the characters could have gone. So it wasn't necessarily for me the whole way through and I could go into all my reasons just as to why I am not the biggest fan of the Ragnarok, but still find it enjoyable, but I won't because it worked for everyone else. And so that's what matters. And I'm really glad that they brought Taika Waititi back on to continue the franchise for Thor 4, man. Thor, Love and Thunder, of course, continuing Valkyrie's story now with him post Endgame now as the king, queen of Asgard. I I, I don't know, Tessa Thompson said king. Uh, so but either way, um, <laughs> that's exciting. Um, but also they're bringing back Natalie Portman as female Thor like from that comics run and that uh yeah i didn't expect jane foster thor ever i i thought natalie portman was done like after the dark world she, she wasn't coming back man i thought that was it and uh yeah no no she's uh <laughs> they got natalie portman back on board to play the jane foster thor that's awesome and all of this has been so awesome. And going beyond this, of course, at the tail end of the panel when they brought everybody out, they announced Mahershala Ali will be Blade. And uh, man, that is exciting. I, uh, I have no idea how they're going to introduce a storyline like that into the MCU. They didn't actually come out and say if it's a movie or if it's a Disney Plus show, uh, but that's pretty great. That is the perfect casting choice, I think. With that comes a bit of disappointment because of course, Marshall Ali was uh, Cottonmouth in uh, Luke Cage. And so uh, that all but confirms that uh, the Netflix shows aren't canon. I mean, they already had the same actress um, who played the uh, what was the villain? What was it? What, what was her name? Um, Mariah Dillard from Luke Cage. She was also in Civil War, so that was already kind of broken before Luke Cage even came out. But uh, we thought that was going to be the only exception. But yeah, no, the, the Netflix shows aren't canon, man. Because now, now uh, yeah, Cottonmouth is Blade, and that's uh, that's a shame because that also means Daredevil isn't canon and. When it comes time to reboot those characters that were used in the Netflix shows, because if they don't bring back the, the cast of Daredevil, Charlie Cox, Deborah Ann Wool, I mean, Vincent D'Onofrio, it doesn't work, man. Because I, I really feel like 
Charlie Cox especially, there's no other actor alive who is going to portray Matt Murdock as well as him. So, the Blade announcement was cool, man, but uh, yeah, that, that just about uh, was the final nail in the coffin as far as the Marvel Netflix shows go. And of course, beyond this, Feige did once again reiterate that, uh, you know, Captain Marvel 2, Black Panther 2, and Guardians 3 are all coming. And he didn't mention Spider-Man 3, which is, you know, that makes sense. It's kind of like Sony's movie that exists in the MCU. That's Sony's thing, and that's um, their whole deal. And it's on them to announce and do all the distribution for Spider-Man. Um, so that's why, of course, Spider-Man 3 was mentioned. Also, because Far From Home literally just came out, which is totally fair. Um, and he did conclude the panel by saying the Fantastic Four are coming, it's in development, along with the mutants. And he didn't just say the X-Men, he said mutants, which is uh, pretty all-encompassing, which I, I uh, man, it's gonna be so great to finally have the X-Men and the Fantastic Four done right. And I, uh, I'm excited, man, because the Fantastic Four are such a cool team. And it's it's Marvel's first family, Stan Lee's creation, and they deserve to be done right in the MCU. Is it a shame that Reed Richards will never get to meet Tony Stark? Yeah, but it is what it is, and I cannot wait for the next, God, five years or more, however long it's gonna take for all of this to play out. There's just so much coming. That apparently does not include Ant-Man and the Wasp 2 or Ant-Man 3, which is also kind of disappointing because I was really looking forward to Cassie finally suiting up now after we saw her all grown up in uh, Endgame. So, uh, yeah. That's going to do it, though. And holy shit, the future of Marvel is still so, so very bright, even though we're moving on now without Tony Stark and without Steve Rogers. So... That's gonna do it. I'm gonna get back to work on my Endgame figures, still working on getting Captain America and my Tony Stark in the Iron Man Mark 85 suit ready to go for the first showcase before the end of the month. I'm really trying to wrap those guys up. AV figures, my buddy Andrew just sent out the uh, brand new Mjolnir for me to get started on to paint, and it's it's gonna be awesome. And I hope I'll catch you guys for that. It'll all, of course, probably go up over on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook first if you wanna check out any of those places. Otherwise, um, I'll see you guys next time for whatever my next video will be. Thanks for sticking around and uh, taking a minute to hang out with me and talk uh, Marvel Phase 4. Let me know which movie you are the most excited for down below or which show. There's a lot to chew on here, and I'll be talking at it at even greater length with my buddy Tate over on the MGF Podcast uh, this upcoming Sunday. Uh, so one week from today, or six days from now, depending on when I post this video. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>